Welcome to a special edition of Anglican Unscripted. This is episode 782. I'm Kevin Coulson. And I'm Susie Leaf. And it's the 18th of January, 2023. All right, let's get into our program. It's a special edition. And I know, you know, right now, please keep George in your prayers. He has a head cold. He went all through the holiday season, through Christmas, and was doing great, and had a day off. And his body said, we were going to take a week off. And so that's hard. We've all had had the cruds and head colds. But I have a friend over in the UK who said, you know, there's news over here. Let's talk about what's happening with the living, love, and faith. But I'm thinking, you know, I have not talked to Susie Leaf since Lambeth. How you doing? I'm okay. I've just recovered from the lurgy, so I'm I'm mm. I'm almost there now. Um, yeah, but it's been a busy and a hectic few months, hasn't it? Since what August five months ago? Yeah, I mean that may very well be the last Lambeth, uh, and it was hard to re- report from. But your daily updates helped us and your readers around the world uh, understand what was really happening. And we have mm. so many archbishops and primates. Uh, within GAFCON and within the Global South, who said, we're not going again. That that was ridiculous. Because clearly, the leadership of Justin Welby in the Church of England itself has lost its way. And in the new news we have, they have. And so let's talk a little bit about the breaking press release that came out. Uh, bishops propose prayer of thanksgiving, dedication, and for God's blessing for same sex same-sex couples. For the first time under historic plans outlined today, same-sex couples will be able to come to church to give thanks for their civil marriage or civil partnership and receive God's blessing. And here we go. We, 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 we kind of thought this would happen. This was the trajectory up until this point. The House of Bishops for the Church of England have always never crossed a certain line. And this is the line they want to cross. Yeah. Well, back in 2017, um, they proposed something similar, Mm -hmm. but it was certainly uh, written in a way that was aiming to help the conservatives. So it talked about the fact that they they were they wouldn't at this point do blessings, um, but that we needed this sort of more inclusive uh, approach. Um, I think within the House of Bishops, there's a very strong sense that to change the doctrine of marriage, uh, the doctrine of holy matrimony, as I think it's now going to be referred to um, over and over again, uh, is too much. But up to that point, we want to uh, welcome um, everybody into the church and pronounce God's blessing on them. Well, I want to point out the hypocrisy here then. If God, if the church can bless it, it implies that God can bless it. And if God, in his greatness, can truly bless same-sex uh, civil partnerships and marriages, why can't the Church of England conduct them? Well, it does seem slightly illogical, doesn't it? But I think what they're aiming to say is that holy matrimony is, is one thing. Um, you know, it's an apple. God can bless apples. Uh, but a same-sex partnership uh, isn't the same, and therefore God can bless that. It's like apples and oranges. It is. Well, okay, so has the Church of England finally kowtowed to culture on this? Uh, They even got a letter from a person in Parliament who said, would you please do this for us? Uh, Is this going to capitulate and keep happy the Liberals? I think from looking at Twitter, obviously, the Liberals are not happy at all. Um, They wanted same-sex marriage, um, the the doctrine to change. Um, We had, although what we had was the Archbishop of York this morning on the radio uh, talking about this as a big step forward. Uh, So it would suggest that this isn't the end of the road. And I think there'll be a lot of work being done now to try to keep the Liberals on board. in case they decide that they're going to vote all this down if they get a chance to when it comes to General Synod in February. Well, what about a, a Jane Ozan? Would she be happy with this or not? She's certainly not happy at all. At least that's what she's saying to the public. 
Okay. Um, going through this document, um, I, they start off the, the, with the first paragraph saying, the bishops of the Church of England will be issuing an apology letter this week for the LGBTQI plus people for the rejection and exclusion and hostility they have faced in churches and the impact uh, this has had on their lives. That seems fair. You, you can't look back on church history and how it's treated uh, the LGBT community very hostile uh, and not say, yeah, there's an apology old. Yeah, absolutely. I think we can all we can all look at the way in which we've dealt with all sorts of different people, can't we? And say, yeah. actually, yeah. we've we've not always got it right. No, <laughs> whether it's gender, race, sex, creed, yeah. we we as a church uh, uh, do need to apologize uh, for that. Um, and then we will urge all congregations in their care to welcome same-sex couples unreservedly and joyfully. I can't say that's bad. Uh, we we want to 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 really? accept and welcome. We don't want to affirm. And I think we, we that's to, where the language just goes yeah. into the complexity. You know, what does it mean uh, to um, love and welcome people into the community yeah. Yeah. and then have to turn around to them and say, well, actually, yes, there are prayers available, uh, but we don't believe they should be used. I think the hardest thing about the proposal that's being put forward is it's going to put every conservative um, traditional um, Bible believing um, clergy person in under huge pressure. Uh, there oh. don't appear to be any any opt outs other than it's voluntary to use these prayers if you would like to. It, it puts us in a strange respect of uh, the many celibate uh, Christian people who have gay attraction, uh, the many uh, uh, LGBTQ people who are post attraction uh, mm -hmm. or or post practicing. And you know, there's lots of strange places now, because now, according to the Church of England, it is godly and can be blessed. Um, you represent Anglican Futures. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about your, your group? Yes, yeah, so well, we set ourselves up in order to provide uh, practical and pastoral support um, to Orthodox Anglican leaders. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, we have um, uh, online uh, thought, think, uh, thought exchanges and ideas exchanges. Uh, we run confidential gatherings for those who are concerned about the future, um, whether they can stay and remain within the structures of the Canterbury-aligned churches, um, mm -hmm. helping them deal prayerfully and pastorally with what it might mean to have to walk away. Now, I've not heard a peep out of any conservative bishops from the Church of England. Are they going to hold off till Friday? I think that's what it seems. I think at, at each stage, um, the Conservatives have always said we will we will stick by the rules, as it were, and they'll they'll mm -hmm. speak on Friday. The Church of England Evangelical Council is also meeting next week, so it may be that they wait until after the Church of Evan Church of England Evangelical Council has met uh, and see what they say. What do you suspect they will say? You don't have to speak for them, but yeah, you certainly <laughs> have some type of insight. I think it's very difficult. I think there will be a lot of uh, uh, there will be um, a lot of uh, not celebration, but an acknowledgement the fact that we are not um, changing the doctrine of marriage. I think it, I don't think we can underestimate how much effort will have gone into uh, for by by the um, conservative bishops. Uh, to, to hold that line. Um, and so I think there will be a lot of pushing on that side of the discussion um, and probably a desire to see whether or not there is some form of differentiation that will be offered within the Church of England uh, for those for whom blessings were always the red line. Now, I'm just thinking of a scenario where a uh, same-sex couple rents out a Church of England church uh, can't use a uh, Church of England priest because they're not allowed to solemnize a same-sex wedding but after their service they're allowed to have a blessing with the priest and then go on and, and have their their celebration in the uh, uh, parish cafeteria 
Yeah, I, th- I mean, it, that's the sort of detail that we're going to see on Friday. But I think there is no, there is nothing to stop. I mean, a civil union will only be able to take place in certain places. It won't be able to take place in the church building. Mm-hmm. But yes, you can go straight from your civil service straight to the church and have something, it would appear, uh, the use of the prayers will mean that there will be the possibility of something that looks very much like um, a wedding. Do we, at a certain time in the future, a year or two down, see modifications to the prayer book uh, you know, with specific uh, prayers for the blessing of same-sex uh, weddings and same-sex uh, civil unions? Well, one of the things in the Church of England is we've not we're, we've not we're not as wedded to the prayer book as as most That's Anglican right. That's right. Um, yeah. provinces, and so many years ago we we created this thing called common worship. And common worship is a real pick and mix of all sorts of styles of of, of prayers and of services. Um, and so what I think the bishops will do is propose prayers that will be, they will commend for use, um, but they won't officially be part of any particular prayer book, apart from this new prayer book that they're, or as it were, what are they, what are they calling it? I'm just looking at the, at looking at the um, statement here. Um, uh, it'll be, is it prayers for love and faith or something like that they're going to call it? Something like that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yes, prayers of love and faith. So there will be a range of prayers known as prayers of love and faith, which could be used voluntarily in churches for couples who've marked a significant stage of their relationship, such as a civil marriage or civil partnership. All right, so in our discussion, I'm getting the hint that you will think conservative bishops say this is a win because we haven't redefined marriage. Uh, the liberals will still be unhappy because they wanted so much more. They wanted uh, the Church of England to completely redefine marriage to include same-sex couples. Yeah, and I think it's that classic salami slicing, isn't it? It's a case of, of saying we'll just take one step forward. And, you know, I was, I was amazed that the Archbishop of York actually used that kind of language this morning of steps forward. It does mm-hmm. suggest that there is, uh, they haven't finished yet. But. Uh, but I think that's the whole point of the listening process. You know, we've conducted, certainly in the Church of England and within the Greater Anglican Communion uh, during the last couple of Lambus, what we call a listening process, uh, where um, even though we don't agree, you will listen to us until we do agree. And I think that's what's happened here, certainly within uh, the Living uh, Love and Faith document. I think that's right. And I think that the pressure to continue, um, we're using exactly the same language as we used at Lambeth, where mm-hmm. the bishops are con- going to continue to walk together, uh, even if they disagree about uh, these issues. Um, really, that it is that Lambeth ag- agenda here that is just saying that the issue, issues around um, sexuality, issues around um, what the biblical authority are really issues of, of adiaphora and things that we can ignore. And I think that's why it's such an important issue uh, for Bible-believing Christians to stand firm on. Mm-hmm. Justin Welby's desire is to have unity within the Church of England and greater unity within the Anglican Communion. Will he be able to have both? No, there's a very an excellent blog piece has been uh, written this week, which describes um, um, Justin, well, the Church of England having to choose um, between its spouse, as in the state of England. And its children, as in the Anglican Communion, um, uh, written by a guy called Joshua Pender, really worth looking at. Um, and I think it is showing the, the problem that the Church of England faces where it stands. Indeed. And I fear that the church, I fear as the global south have said in the past, haven't they, that what do you do when mum, when your mother starts to lose her mind? You certainly don't let her keep driving. Absolutely. Susie, I do want to thank you for your time. You're so generous to hop on with what she had an hour's notice. She said, I'll be there. Don't 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 worry one bit. I, I'm, I'm there. And so that, that was great. And uh, I looked forward to uh, our next Unscripted Together. Nice to see you.